Hey guys, I'm Lucas and welcome to K-News episode 59 about the upcoming Antares and the past Long March 2F launch yesterday. The Chinese rocket is a two-stage launcher with four liquid fuel strap-on boosters. The upper stage burns a hypergolic fuel which means it ignites all by itself when the two fuel components get mixed together. This makes the overall design fail safer but is of course very toxic. On top of that is the Shenzhou 11 spacecraft which will harbor two Chinese Taikonauts and supplies for a 30 day mission. The launch took place last night at 23.30 UTC and the rocket took off from Jiuquan in West China. The rocket then headed for a low earth orbit where the recently launched Tiangong 2 space station awaits. The crew consists of the commander Jing Haipang who is on his third flight and the second crew member Chen Dong who flies to space for the first time. After engine burnout on the upper stage and separation, the Shenzhou spacecraft will now catch up with the station on a low orbit and gradually increase it as it comes closer. There is not much official information available but both will stay in space for 30 days which will be the longest stay for Chinese take or not so far. This is a very big deal for China and the TV coverage is exceptionally good. They will even follow the docking maneuver with a small camera satellite which is a first I believe. The link to the live stream is of course in the description. Now Orbital ATK is finally back. After the launch anomaly almost exactly two years ago, the upgraded Antares launcher is now back on track. The new version features different engines on the first stage booster which were the cause of the past explosion. The Russian RD-181 replaced the AJ-26 which were modified Russian NK-33s built to power the giant Russian N1 moon rocket. The cause of the explosion was the turbo pump which creates the pressure needed to feed the engine's chamber. A rotary part had contact with the stationary part which led to mention the explosion. This happened so early into the flight that the remaining thrust was not enough to keep the rocket up and so it dropped back to the launch pad. But enough of the past. On top of the new first stage booster is a liquid fueled upper stage which carries the Cygnus spacecraft. Launch is scheduled for today midnight UTC and will take place at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport at the US East Coast. The rocket will head east and also aim for a low earth orbit chasing the International Space Station at 51.6 degrees. Cygnus is packed with different experiments, supplies, hardware and also some cubesets which will be released after Cygnus has left the station again. What stands out is the so called Spacecraft Fire Experiment or Sapphire for short. It is the second time scientists will ignite a fire inside a chamber in microgravity. Fire behaves very differently on the station because without a gravitational pull there is no real up. This means a flame does not move anywhere when the fire breaks out. It just stays in place and forms a big plasma bubble which slowly consumes the oxygen around it. Now because the heat stays in one place it is harder to detect which makes it so dangerous. However because of that nature the experiment won't be performed while it is docked to the station. Instead the experiment will be run autonomously while Cygnus gets deorbited. Cygnus will catch up to the station similar to Shenzhou 11 but will not dock by itself and instead will be grabbed by the Canadarm like the Dragon spacecraft for example. I'm really glad Orbital ADK is back and hope they will be able to ramp up their launch rate quickly. In the end I want to give a shout out to my patrons. These support my monthly crowdfunding campaign and while it is optional it really motivates a lot. Thanks. Okay. That shall conclude episode 59 and I hope to see you in the next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.